you may have heard a rumour that Python is quite slow as far as programming languages go. And I set out to find out just how slow it is. You may remember a while back I released a video on how to write tic-tac-toe in Python. I thought it'd be quite a fun idea to rewrite that code in C++. I would have used C but the Python code uses classes and I didn't want to go to complete straight code because that wouldn't be a fair comparison. I suspect that classes are substantially slower than straight C code. But the results of this little test were staggering. So what I did was I ported the code to C++ and then I decided to get the computer to play itself 10,000 times in each programming language. I started the Python code executing first because I suspected it was going to be slower and then I started the C++ code. You can see that almost instantly the C++ code caught up and then completely blew past Python. Now I was expecting C++ to be faster. I wasn't expecting it to be quite this fast. The C++ code finished in 91 seconds while the other code was still running and hadn't even reached a thousand yet. Some considerable time later the Python code did eventually finish running. It took 995.863 seconds. This means that the C++ code was 10.94 times faster than the original Python code. Put another way, the Python code was 994% slower than the original code. That was truly staggering to me. Now you may be asking, if Python is so slow, why is it one of the most popular programming languages in the world? And two, why do companies still use it to program in? Well, execution speed is just one side of the story. There's also development speed, and development speed in Python is way, way faster. So first off, let's look at the actual number of lines of code I had to program in Python. It was a total of 254 lines of code made up the tic-tac-toe game. If we now look at the C++ code, and this includes everything I had to do, we're up to 461 lines of code. Now this includes things like JSON setup files and CMake files. CMake is basically the way that you get your programs to compile in order to run them. So it's not really the program's code, but you still have to do it if you want your program to compile. So you have to write approximately 80% more code if you're a C++ developer versus a Python developer. And not all lines of code are developed equal. It took me less than two hours to write the Python version of Tic-Tac-Toe and the AI that plays itself. In C++, it took me about 12 hours. It's been a few years since I last wrote C or C++. So you can imagine I'm a little bit rusty and I can probably shave a third of time off there. But it would still take me four times longer to code something like tic-tac-toe than it would in Python. And not all that is code time, some of it is debugging. For instance, I cannot create a for loop in Python that can overflow. I could do a while loop that would overflow, but I would get a subscript out of range error or something like that. In C or C++, if I'm looping over an array of characters, it will actually loop out at the end without giving me an error. In fact, the first thing I know about an error is I've got some weird character printed on my screen. It must be an overflow. Go and find it. And that's just one of the reasons that Python is slower. Each time you go around your loop, something is checking to make sure you don't overflow that array. And guardrails, the things that protect us from doing silly things, come at a cost. As another example of guardrails, let's just look at variables. In C++, we tell a variable exactly what type we want that variable to be. In this case, an integer. In Python, we do no such thing, and that's because Python is dynamically typed. We can change this to a string anytime we want. But this flexibility comes at a cost. If we were to change this to a string and then add an integer to it, it could crash. So to prevent that, Python has to check that the value is still an integer before it lets us add to it. Add to that that Python actually has no machine native way of storing an integer. In fact, when we create one, it's not creating an integer at all, it's creating an object that represents the integer. On top of that, it's immutable, so if I want to add a number to it, I actually come up with a completely different object. Fundamentally, Python is easier to use because our code is abstracted further away from the hardware of the machine. This means we have to care about less detail and therefore we can code much, much faster. Wonder why companies still love to hire people to do Python? Because you can code way faster than you can in C++ or C. The quicker you finish stuff, the more you can move on to something else and therefore the cheaper the product you're creating is. There is one other large difference between how C++ and Python actually runs. First off, C++ code is not run on the machine directly. Instead, it's compiled to machine code. That creates the executable I ran and that is what runs really fast. The whole program is in machine code from start to finish. 
And the compiler can do all kinds of weird and wonderful magic to make it more efficient on your particular CPU. And this takes us to another point. Not all Python implementations are the same. The implementation of Python I'm most familiar with is CPython. There are many different variations. One example of this is PyPy. This is another Python engine that uses just-in-time compilation, so it can achieve much faster speeds. If we look at the way CPython works though, you'll see that when you run your code, you often see new files get created with a file extension of PyC. This file contains Python bytecode, and this special code is a code that the Python interpreter reads line by line as it executes on your machine. So line by line, it takes this bit of code and converts it to machine code for your machine to use. When the Python interpreter loops over this, it's doing the same conversion over and over again for repeated lines of code. There's no optimization up front there to compile it to machine code. If we did this in a similar way to how PyPy does it, we'd see speed gains. The key thing here is Python is completely designed for ease of use. And that ease of use comes at a cost. But there are several things you can do to make your Python code faster. For instance, there's a Python package called Scython that will compile your Python code into something that runs at similar speed to C. It actually uses C variable types. In fact, just Scythonizing a piece of Python code can make it run so much faster. Also, if you've got a piece of code that has to run super fast because it's doing something super important, then you can actually write it in C and get Python to call it. This is called a Python C extension module, and you can import it just like a normal Python package. Only when the code executes, it runs straight in C. It's really important to note that some of the Python libraries that you actually download and run through your code are actually already written in C modules, so when you run them, they run at C speed. And another way of writing faster Python code in general is just to write better Python code. Some things are just naturally faster, such as list comprehensions versus loops. Also, if you're going to find a number out of millions, use a set instead of using a list. Now, I was a little unfair in this video. If we compared Python to other languages, we wouldn't have seen the same amount of difference. But taking it to an extreme, such as C++, really shows that it's quite inefficient. But in some cases, Python code runs fast enough to do what you need it to do. It's not like we're all writing day trading systems, which have to be super speed. The tic-tac-toe program, for instance, if you were just playing the computer, is fast enough for anything. But when you compound it by making it play itself 10,000 times, I got bored and that's where this whole video came from. In summary, there is absolutely nothing wrong with using Python. If you do need things to be faster, you can make them faster. That said, I do believe that more programmers should try C or C++. Being able to have direct access to memory and things like that, and without those safety rails, really will teach you to be a better programmer. If you found this video useful or entertaining, then please do not hesitate to click the like button. I like it a lot. And if you watch more than one of my videos and found them useful, then why not consider subscribing? And with that, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.